internet so if you watch my planner channel which I will link down below then you'll know that I recently or not so recently came back from a trip to Japan which was so amazing I went during Sakura season and this is the second time I've gone during Sakura season because it is so so beautiful. I feel like quintessential Japan is always depicted with sakura and all those beautiful flowers so I just love going back during that time. Unfortunately there are some cons when you go back during that time. One, the weather is cold at least. I went eight years ago and I went this year and it's been cold and kind of rainy both times and it's expensive because everybody wants to go during sakura season so I definitely know we'll be going back pretty soon and I suspect it will be either in the dead of winter or at least when the weather is a lot warmer hopefully I did a lot of shopping whilst I was in Japan how could I not? and I bought a bunch of stationery stuff and a bunch of beauty products and then a whole bunch of stuff in between so I thought I would film a Japan beauty haul video for this channel and then if you're curious to know what sort of stationery I got then be sure to check out my planner channel where I will film a whole bunch of stationery hauls there. These are eye drops. They do not taste like lychee. Yes, I have tried them. Why did I admit that? These only last a month according to the instructions that once you open them because it's kind of like a little, little, where is it? Do you see? Oh, there it is. There, that's what it looks like. And this is specifically meant for contact lens users. I wear contact lenses pretty much every single day, so I have to use specific eye drops. I can't just use any eye drops, which is a pain. I love these ones. I think I love, honestly, the packaging is pretty cute, but I love how convenient it is. I can just throw it in my purse and then I can just take it and use it anytime. I tend to need these a lot more when I travel obviously because my eyes do tend to get a lot drier when I'm traveling but yeah you can't get these in Australia at least not for an exorbitant amount of money so I bought tons of this you're seeing one I bought a lot and I don't really want to talk about how many I bought but I need these for when I travel the other product that I always use this is not going to come as a surprise to anybody but it is the Biore sunscreen this is actually a large version I didn't know they made these in large versions I saw them and I was like oh, I Oh, I did not work out if it was cheaper to get the large one or the small. Anyways, I did not realize they made larger versions of these. It's so cool because I use this every single day when I go outside of the house. It's my facial sunscreen and makeup goes on it really well. So I love this stuff. I probably still have two or three bottles that are in my current collection that I'm waiting to use. But I went to town and bought tons of these. Okay, this is not really a beauty product, but I feel like I want to use it for holding my makeup. So I'm just going to show it. This is a little kitten pouch and if you know me you know I love cats like I love cats so much. Um, Violet actually won this for me in a claw machine. It's so soft and squishy and you can store lots of stuff in it so I mean it's more just a souvenir of anything but it's just so cute and I love it and it's going to house lots of makeup. So these two products I got at Duty Free as I was leaving Japan. One is the Dior Attic Lip Sugar Scrub. I have heard mixed things about this. A lot of people are like, oh, it really doesn't do anything. And other people say it's amazing. They use this every night. I personally love using that Lush bubblegum pot of sugar scrub and applying that. The only thing is I find that annoying sometimes because at night when I remove my makeup, my hands are all greasy. And then I'm like, how do I now get this sugar scrub put on my lips? And I know what you're going to say. You're going to be like, well, why don't you just do the scrub first? I don't know. I have a process to how I do things. And I feel like the cleansing oil step goes better first so that can get a little bit messy and so I thought I would give this one a shot and see how I go with it and then the other one I got is the Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream lip protector I love the balm stick version of this love it and I'm not, usually not the hugest fan of pots but I have this weird habit now where I like using lip balms beyond just lip balm purposes like sometimes the cuticles uh, the skin around my nails will get a bit dried out so I'll use it for that. I suffer from eczema so I have patches of dry spots and if I'm at work or I'm out and I don't have any moisturizer I will use lip balm for that and I find it works fine. I feel like it works really good so I don't really want to have a stick on my face so I figure something like this would work really well because I can just touch up. So I feel like it's multi-purpose. If I explain 
every item to you guys. I feel like this video is going to get super long, so I'm going to try and speed it up just, just a little bit. In Tokyo, we stayed in Shinjuku, and there was this like multi-level beauty shop. It was very beautiful, and I bought a bunch of can make stuff because you can't go wrong with can make. For those unfamiliar, can make is kind of like a budget drugstore makeup, but it's I feel like it is the child of Jill Stewart. Jill Stewart is beautiful, but it's super expensive. I feel like this is also quite beautiful, but cheaper like a lot more affordable so that's how i would classify can make so the first thing i got was this lip cheek gel i don't think i would use this for cheeks i don't like using cream products on my cheeks so this is probably going to be more like a lip balm and it is super super creamy wow um it's probably very sheer you're not going to be able to see it but uh, it just like it just feels like it just glides really 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 easily a little clearer there. The other thing to keep in mind with Asian cosmetics is that a lot of the pigmentation can be sheer on the sheerer side. Not all, but generally you're going to find that most of it is very sheer. Mm, smells nice too. Feels very moisturizing. Next thing I bought was this Can Make Color Mixing Corrector. I like, it's kind of, it's the light version. So I think there was two and this is the lightest one they have. Light tan to medium. The whole intention is to mix the concealers to get your perfect base. So I think that would be really, really useful. Plus it looks so cute. Next is a little nail polish. I also got this blush from Can Make. It's Glow Fleur Cheeks. It's in number one. I love the pattern on this. It's a little washed out on camera, but it's this beautiful floral design. And it's a very, you're not going to be able to see it. I think it's too, no, you won't be able to see it. At least I can't see it on the screen, but it's a very, very light pink design. And then of course I got an eyeshadow palette because I feel like I have to get eyeshadow palettes. It's kind of like my addiction. It's Nothing too crazy. It's a pretty... I have to turn it this way. I keep... If I do it this way, it's like completely washed out. If I do it this way, you can kind of see the color more accurately. Yeah, that looks much more accurate. At the back of a lot of these Asian cosmetics, they give you instructions on how you should be applying the eyeshadow, like which one in which step. So I think that's really cool. All the shades are, however, are shimmery. You've got this one base here and then you build up a more like light wearable shimmery bronzed eye some random stuff uh nail polish remover because i have these little pads that i got from ulta back when i was in america that i love using but for some reason half of them dried out when i brought them over to japan so i couldn't use them so i had to use this because i did have to redo my nails a couple times it's from shiseido surprisingly and it was very affordable given that it's shiseido and it yeah, works well nothing much to say about this I got a pack of lashes. I didn't really need more lashes because I kind of have a box of them at home, but these were very like light, light, wispy, and I thought these would be good to wear. They almost look better when I'm not wearing mascara. It's almost my natural lashes, maybe with some lengthening mascara, and then this tends to look better. If I use very voluminous mascara, like I am wearing now, it just kind of fades in comparison. It doesn't look as good, so I think these are really nice natural lashes. I'm not 100% on the actual brand because on the brands here it says Sana. If I can find these products online, I'll link them down below so you can get to them. But this is a kind of a milky cleanser, no foam, which is great because I have dry skin. So this actually works out really nicely. I've actually already used this. That's why it's not packaged or anything. But I haven't used it enough to know if it's good for my skin or not. So we'll see. I also got a matching toner. I don't actually know if it's from the same range. I feel like they, they look similar, but then you've got some that are in this darker orange packaging and some in a bit more of a lighter yellow packaging. So I think they're probably different lines. I know they have a website that explains it all in detail, so you can go check that out. But I was looking for a bit, this is a bit more of a milky lotion, like kind of toner very liquid and I actually really bought this more because I have a lot of those masks that come in tablet form that you kind of have to saturate with lotion and I thought this would be perfect for that because I'd run out of the one I've been previously using and from the same brand but a different line I think this is a bit more of the anti-aging line or the more moisturizing line this is just eye serum I think it comes oh okay for some reason I thought it came with like a little applicator for under the eyes but it's just a little it's just a little tube 
Um, but this is just eye cream for under the eyes. Thought I would give it a shot because I'm actually running low on nighttime eye cream. So I thought I would try this brand, see what I think of it. I also picked up this Curel lip balm. So I was reading a bunch of Japanese beauty blogs before I left just to see if I could get some recommendations. And this came up as being one of like the best lip balms. I mean, it does have this little reward thing. So I don't know. We'll see if it's any good. The last drugstore product I bought was this eye mask. It's just like a pack. Like as if you get like wet wipes out of it or something, but it's basically just full of masks for under your eyes So I thought that was brilliant. I think you get 30 in total I'm not actually really sure 30 or 44 one of those numbers And so you get a good amount of uses from it and it's just I mean, yeah, I got thrown away by the whole packaging of it. So now I'm going to go on to specific brands. We went into quite a few individual brands themselves, so I will go through each one. First one we went to is Etude House, which is actually a Korean brand, but you know. So I got a couple of random masks from Etude. This one is for like your nose, so you've, it comes in like three steps. I love these three step nose mask packs. They're just, I don't know if they're any better or not, but they're just so intriguing. So you basically have three masks to put on if you're trying to clear out the pores in your nose. This first one opens up your pores. This one removes any blackheads, whiteheads, and then this one closes up your pores again. Then I got these weird nail finger pack masks. It's like if you were removing gel polish and you know how you have your cotton pad and then you wrap it usually in aluminium foil and so your fingers all look really nice and fancy with aluminium foil. Same concept but in cotton. There you go, you can kind of see it there. Yeah, I think this is really just more to help improve the condition of your nails, which is interesting because nails are technically dead so not really sure how that's gonna work and then the last mask I got is actually a lip patch because why not I think these are hilarious I don't really need them because I use lip balm every night so my lips are generally pretty okay but it's very liquidy can you kind of see there's like liquid in it and who doesn't want to sit around at home with massive lip packs on? I got this tub of eye patches or eye like under eye patches. I'm not going to open it because I don't know whether that's going to destroy it or anything like introduce oxygen. And what I find really interesting about this is that, as you can tell, I have this like strange obsession with buying like packs for under my eyes i don't know if it's i'm pretty sure it's sealed so i'm not going to open it yet because i don't want to use it just yet but i can do a review of this on the blog once i start using it basically they're supposed to be gold i don't know if it's real gold or not but i like that it says it has it's more for anti-aging because i do have a couple fine lines under here so i do tend to be a little bit more interested in anything that promotes healthy under eyes i suppose you get 60 little patches or little um, eye masks to wear. To be honest, this wasn't the one that I originally wanted. There was like a blog post that was talking about a specific brand called Plus One C. And she was saying that um, that particular brand had something very similar to this. And it was gel, it was very hydrating. So I looked all over Japan for that. Like, oh, I'm just getting comfortable again. Yeah, I looked all over Japan for it. I even asked people for it. Um, the brand was there. A lot of the shops like Tokyo Hands, like, like Tokyo Hands did have One Plus C, the brand, but they didn't have that eye gel, like the eye gel mask, which was so disappointing because I really wanted to try it. So I found this instead and I thought I would give it a shot and see if it was any good. And I don't know. I think once I've gone through this set of beauty products, I might actually just order it online, the Plus One C even though it's kind of expensive online because it's online but I just really had my heart on trying it out I also got some cleansing foam happy essential foam it specifically says collagen there was like two different ones one was moisturizing one was collagen I figure I have a lot of things that are for moisturizing purposes so maybe I need some collagen I also picked up an eyeshadow palette and it's a nude eyeshadow palette because I desperately needed more of those it is the Co play color eyes it's weird that it would say that because it's actually not a very colorful palette there you go so that's what it actually looks like um i think the plastic's actually stuck on so i'll have to take that out at some point it's a very nude with some pinky shade which is perfect for me because i love nude colors but what i do love is that every shade has a beverage related name I just realized that if this once I get rid of this sheet, I'm not going to know the name because the names aren't written anywhere else. So I'm going to have to stick this on the mirror or something like that. You've got honey milk, 
cafe mocha, chocolate latte, caramel latte, beach coconut, fall in heart with plop. This, this like golden shade, that's a weird name. Um, take out without syrup. Okay, these names are getting a little weirder. Ca cafe latte. Okay, that's all right. Honey grapefruit syrup, peach pepper salt. I don't know if these are actual drinks in Korea, but those are kind of weird drinks. And the last two from Etude House I got purely because it says bubble tea. Wouldn't you? I mean, I'm a huge drinker of bubble tea. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd probably drink it every single day, but $5 for a drink is pretty pricey. But I love bubble tea so much, and I just saw these and it was just so cute. So basically, these are sleeping masks. If you're gonna ask me how do you stop your pillow from getting all getting this product all over it, you can't. So the best way, the best thing I recommend is that you put a towel over your pillow every time you are using a sleeping mask. It will wipe out, it will probably end up in your hair. It's a messy procedure, but I do find that a lot of sleeping masks actually do perform quite well. I have no idea if these ones will perform well. And can you guys see right at the bottom? They actually have pearls right at the bottom. It's so adorable. It's called black tea flavor, this one. It does smell quite nice. I do like the black, it does, I don't know if it actually smells like black tea, but it does smell in that realm and I quite like it. So I don't know how to pronounce this because it's French, even though the makeup is sold mostly in Japan from what I can tell, made in Japan, but it is Laudere. So for those of you who don't know, I don't know the history of Laudere, but I think they may, mostly made desserts in France. And I don't know how it worked out that they started making makeup as well, but I've been quite a fan of their makeup for a little while now. I have their petal blushes, I have that little egg home, egg <laughs> dome blush that they have, which I don't really use. I especially don't use the petal blush because it's just too beautiful. I kind of use it more as decorative piece in my study. I know some people cringe at the fact of people buying things and not using them, but I like it. And that's all that really matters, so I just keep it there for looks. But this trip, I decided I'd pick up one of their foundations. I've never tried their foundation before. It does have a pretty heavy scent, so that's just something to keep in mind. I thought I would pick it up, give it a shot. This is the lightest shade, and on me, on the camera, it almost looks a little bit too dark, but I think when blended out, it'll look pretty good. So I'm looking forward to trying this, and it is a pump. So, ooh, I almost hit myself in the face with it. Yeah, I'll try it out and I'll probably do a blog post review. And then the other one I picked up is one of their blushes in rose pink. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, there it is, it's this one. I picked up one of their blushes in number four. I was gonna say, does it have an actual colored name, but I don't think it does. It's a mini pressed sheet color. So you can buy these bigger ones where they like come in big compacts. Well, like almost triple the price. And I thought, well, I just mostly want to try the product. I'm not really buying it to just look at because I already have a blush specifically for looking at and not using. So I do want to use this one because I want to buy a blush for using. So it's tiny, tiny packaging and it's a coral blush. So I definitely will use this because coral blushes are kind of my comfort level and it smells like rose, like um, old lady rose scent. I don't know. I quite like it though. Like, I know some people cringe at that smell, but I don't love it, but I don't steer away from it either. I think it's pretty good. So my last proper brand, before I get onto just one last product, is Jill Stewart, because why not? I'm in Japan, it's Jill Stewart. For those of you who don't know, Jill Stewart is a incredibly beautiful makeup brand. They have the most beautiful packaging. They really invest in their whole branding, where it's very light, it's very girly, elegant. I feel like it's a little bit French chic to it as well. So the first thing I got is cleansing oil because I love cleansing oil. I wanted to do a proper blog post video, something about all the, all the different types of cleansing oils. I know I can't do all of them because it's just too many, but I wanted to get a healthy mix of Asian cleansing oils and European cleansing oils and just kind of do a comparison on them. So I felt it appropriate to get the Jill Stewart cleansing oil. The bottle is so pretty. I have no idea if it's actually any good, but 
I almost feel like even when I finish using this, I want to keep the bottle for other cleansing oils because it just looks stunning. I bought some nail polish because Jill Stewart Nail Polish is one of my favorite brands. It's right up there with Dior. I'm going to open all these to show you what the actual colors are. A lot of the Jill Stewart Nail Polish I have right now is very pink, so I tried to be adventurous and get a little bit more pink, but I did actually also pick up kind of a yellow and a blue... It's not bluish. It is kind of bluish color. It's kind of like a light blue color, almost white, and then a yellow shade. And then I got two pink shades. This one is from their current limited edition range, which I cannot remember the name of. But this is much more opaque from what I tried. And then this one I actually bought quite early on in the trip because I wanted some pink nail polish. This one is number seven. It's called Sweet Syrup. And do not be fooled by this bottle. It is incredibly sheer. To get this level of pigmentation you see in the bottle, you may need like eight coats. Like eight thin coats but eight coats i'm not even joking i'm not even exaggerating that i went up to about four coats and i probably got a third maybe half this pigmentation and i was not happy because i was looking for some pigmented nails so i'm not really sure why anyone else would buy this because one or two coats just kind of makes it slightly milky but it's kind of clear at the same time it does have some very soft shimmer in it so maybe a good top coat to wear yeah I don't know so I was a bit disappointed by this one but it is a very beautiful shade if you don't really want to if maybe you want to wear maybe you want your nails to be shiny you don't want them to be completely clear so you want a little bit of something then this was probably good for you for lips I picked up two products I got this lipstick see this is what I mean this is like so Jill Stewart packaging it is so intricate and then of course I go for like the most nudist shade ever this is like my favorite sort of shade it is much sheerer than it looks i would typically go for something a little bit more pigmented but i have been wanting to try this particular range i think it's called rouge my dress so i have a couple of their other lipsticks and i just wanted to try this particular new range and see what it's like the other lip product i got is in rose pink it's actually just a lip balm specifically they call it what do they call it melty lip balm yep and it looks kind of like this it's just a nice little pot it has a nice big crystal at the top oh it smells so good i mean it's basically sheer it's just a lip balm but it smells it smells like roses and strawberries mixed together i love it it smells so nice i walked off with two eyeshadow palettes i think this is a limited edition eyeshadow palette and this is from their permanent range so i'll show you this first this one is in Lady Velour Ribbon. Ugh, I'm so sorry when I butcher names. But there you go. That's what it looks like. It's a beautiful... Why am I hiding my face like this? I don't know. It just feels easier this way. Okay, I'm going to stop doing that. Do it this side. There you go. It's a really sort of brown burgundy shade. I have so many nude eyeshadow palettes like browns, neutrals. So I thought I would opt for something, you know still neutral but it has a little bit of burgundy in it and i think that would look really nice especially in autumn now i talk like i'm actually going to really use this palette in autumn and i'm totally going to do all the plums and everything we all know that's not necessarily true but let's just go with it and then the other palette i brought which i actually really love this packaging it's just amazing this is a much more neutral palette there you go it is all shimmery so that's the other thing to keep in mind i, I don't think jill stewart had any matte shades i think they were all this kind of soft shimmery shade so what are you gonna do um but yeah this was their neutral one i think they had another one which had a little bit more color they had three of these one was like full pastel colors and then one had a little bit more color and this was probably the most wearable palette of all of them so that's why i picked this one up so those are all my makeup products i have one last product to show you guys and then you can stop watching this video so Tobias and I were thinking about introducing some sort of tradition when it comes to traveling. One of the things we thought we would do is actually buy a perfume for every trip we go on that kind of symbolizes that trip. And I don't think this is a unique thing to us. I read a blog post once about a girl who would, even for short trips, like interstate trips, she would buy, she was like a big perfume person, but she would buy a perfume for every single trip she made and use it throughout that whole trip and then that perfume would remind her of that trip and I love that idea, I thought it was so good so talk to Tobias, he was totally in for it so we decided to pick up a perfume at the airport as we were leaving for our trip and kind of use that to represent the trip so the trip has a scent to it unfortunately 
I don't typically wear perfume, either does Tobias, so it wasn't really in our nature to be pulling out this perfume to spritz. So we would do it every time we went into a new room, like when we checked into a different hotel. But you're gonna see, this is the perfume we picked. It's not, we've used it, but not a ton of it. So there's still a lot of perfume left. This is by Givenchy. It is Rose a la Fol Folie. I'm not sure. It's a beautiful floral scent. It does actually remind me of the trip now that I'm smelling it. I'm like, oh, that takes me back to when we were in Lake Kawaguchi or something. It's a very nice scent. It's very floral. It's pink because we were going during Sakura season. And this is officially the perfume that represents the trip for us. So, I mean, every time I smell it now, I'm going to think of the trip, which is awesome. And that is everything that is the entire haul. I know it was a pretty big haul, so thank you so much if you made it right to the end of the video. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to you, internet. Bye.